station. This is Isa Piero in Rome. How do you hear me? And Jules, I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard. Thank you, Samantha. We are with a lot of kids here, and I leave the floor to Roberto Battiston, President de l'Asi. Samantha, it's a great pleasure to see you today in this uh, great room full of uh, young kids. We are here with uh, representatives of ESA, Mrs. Griffoni, and the representative of the Air Force, and Minister Giannini, who is our uh, person for this uh, day today. And greetings. Uh, I'm going to send you greetings uh, so that I don't uh, interrupt the dialogue. So I remind the kids that Samantha has a little bit of a delay of a few seconds. So so that we're, we don't lose time, we're going to say hello all together, and then we are going to move forward. Good day, Samantha. This is Elena. Great greeting. And most of all, hello from the uh, General Director, Th Tomas Ryder. I, I just wanted to wish you uh, congratulations for the work that awaits you in the next few weeks, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Good day, Samantha. Uh, I'm not General Magro. I'm Commander Ferro, but uh, on whose behalf I, I bring you his greetings, and I bring you greetings of the entire Air Force, and uh, we are waiting for you at your return. Good day, Samantha. I am Stefania Giannini, the, the Minister of Education for University and Research. I'm so happy to be here today with a, a great representation of the Italian schools. Uh, we are waiting for you, and I will let you know why. Oh, and we're starting with that question, so it's my turn. I'm, I have the privilege. Uh, I also, I, I'm a little starstruck, so hopefully I think I represent everybody's emotions here, but uh, they'll have the opportunity to ask you something. But uh, the first question is, when you started to feel that beyond being an engineer, you maybe felt like doing something special, something more. Was it at the beginning of your studies, or is it something that uh, came to you during your path, during your journey? But first of all, good day to everyone, to uh, Mrs. Minister Giannini, President Battiston, Colonel Serra, Dr. Gerfoni Winters, and uh, a warm hello to all the boys and girls that are there today, and to all, welcome to space on board of the International Space Station. To answer your question, Minister, I, in truth, I, I've always dreamt since I was a little girl uh, to travel in, in space uh, as an astronaut. Perhaps I didn't even know what an astronaut was, but I wanted to go into space. Often I say that I didn't choose space as a career, but uh, space chose me because it, it happened before, before I really could make a conscious choice. But naturally, you know, growing up and, and as a person develops interests, more concrete passions. So things that I developed uh, for science, flight, technology, they, they put me on the right path to be able to realize this dream of, of being able to travel to space. So my fantasies uh, as, as a child uh, converged in, into my interests and my passions of, of a young woman and then an adult woman. Uh, and the choice, of course, uh, was wonderful for me because I am so satisfied, content, and happy to be in this environment and to do this work. Thank you. I, I think it's a... I think it's an answer. Okay, can I continue? Okay. The, the second question that I had is, is relative to the experience that uh, you're having in this uh, long mission. How do you feel after, well, let's say we were here for the launch. That was how long? So it's been uh, about five months. 
So after five months of being away from all those things that, that even though you're prepared for this experience, they, they represent your everyday life of astronauts. So do you miss Earth, in other words? Minister, I have to say, in general, as a person, I do not, uh, I'm not very nostalgic. I, I'm very used uh, ever since I was uh, little to change environments, to move. So I think, I think my experiences of life taught me to adapt and then to accept what the environment is around me as a new normal, as, as a new home. So I have to say, after, I, after the great joy and euphoria, the initial peri period of uh, uh, adaptation, because at first, I just felt like a, a child. You have to learn everything again here. But here, after five months in space, I really feel like I, I'm perfectly adapted. I, I feel at home. Of course, uh, some things I miss, the, the presence uh, of, of loved ones, uh, simple things like being able to take a shower. But, but let's say, it, uh, as a character, I, I, I tend to not focus on, on uh, missing things. But I enjoy the present. Then, then I'm sure when, when I'll be back on Earth, I'll, I'll have to adapt uh, to being a terrestrial uh, human being instead of a space human being. A very last question. How does a minister help all these kids that are here and all their uh, schoolmates that are in Italian schools today if they want and if they have the same talents and determination to follow an extraordinary dream like that of becoming an astronaut or being a great scientist or a researcher. I, I putting, I'm putting in all my efforts, but, but perhaps seeing the world from above, you have some suggestions, even something important. I, I would be grateful if you could uh, give me some. Minister, thank you for the question, and, and I, I will answer, uh, but by saying that first, I, I don't feel competent to, to uh, give suggestions about policy, but, but with humility, I would like to say that perhaps we need to increase attention in Italian schools for scientific uh, topics like mathematics and technology to increase or, or allow uh, or increase effectiveness of learning English and, and let students uh, move more in, in terms of international exchanges so that, that they can uh, make experiences of study and life experiences abroad. That then I, I'm on the right, I'm on the right path. So it, it's a long journey, but I'm on the right path. Thank you so much, Samantha. Uh, let's uh, thank the minister for now. Let's uh, let's go to the students now, and then uh, and then I see a, a little doll, a stuffed doll there uh, on your right. What is it? So, Paxi has been here in, in many events with the Earth. She's the uh, ESA mascot. She helps, uh, she helps us talk to the uh, kids in Europe, but I still don't understand if it's a boy or a girl. Uh, everyone can decide for themselves, but uh, I, I keep her here in Columbus and, and she helps me with the experiments. Hello, Samantha. This is Marco Gito from, uh, from Instituto Tecnologico of Milazzo. This is my question. Among your experiments on uh, the inf on microgravity, the, uh, the research uh, can be an input to understand the uh, self-sufficient experiments in the future? That's that's a very interesting question. So yes, the, the answer is absolutely yes. Many of the experiments that uh, we conduct on board have effects in two different fields. So they allow us to understand biological mechanisms, like you're saying, of, of the uh, 
vegetable world and, and, and but also at the animal world and, and us human beings. So from one side that will allow us to understand how to adapt to live in space for a long mission. So again, if we want to continue to explore the solar system beyond low Earth orbit, we need to be able to stay in space much longer than we do now for six months. E even, even if I see here, I, you can't see him here, but my colleague who arrived here uh, a couple of weeks ago, but he's going to be here for a year. But, but again, and then of course there are these these things that we learn allow us to increase our insight. The uh, uh, of the uh, biological processes that help Earth research, for example, to understand how you develop some pathologies and, and how you can act on them, for example, with new medicines and, and to counteract uh, the development of an illness. illness. So again, what we do here is both for exploration and uh, for uh, Earth science in the fields of uh, health and medicine. Hello, Samantha. I'm Saverio, and I go to Liceo Classico in Anzio. Here's my question. Do you believe that our generation of youth will have the opportunity to see developments like the creation of colonies of humans on the moon or Mars, or the possible economical utilization of these uh, worlds? Hi, Saverio. I am optimist. I think so. I think that we will be, I think your generation will see men and women on a, outside our low Earth orbit. So possibly on, on the moon or we're talking about exploring asteroids and of course Mars. I don't know if we're going to be talking about colonies. So if we're saying colonies, we mean people who uh, immigrate that move on these celestial bodies and go live there. At this, I don't know, but but I, uh, I have absolute faith that your generation will see an exploration, e even a, a massive by men and women beyond low Earth orbit. Good day, so, Captain Cristofredi. This is Daniele Bruno of the uh, military school. The photo that you send us from space are beautiful. On one hand, it, it shows us how little, uh, how small we are. But on the other hand, they they give us great energy to understand how important it is to uh, preserve this marvelous planet that is Earth. Being young, we we have a long road in front of us. But I, I think your example and your experience are, are a great stimulus to face the uh, our activities, our challenges with. Uh, great energy because if you said that we, if we have to choose between two roads it's best to uh, take the one uphill because it brings more success so my question is captain what is the right ingredient to arrive up there where you are thank you Alievo Bruna. this is a very interesting question the, the key you, you already you already mentioned we are talking about making choices while we grow up that challenge us, that test our limits, because in this way, you, you get stronger, you understand your, uh, how strong you are, because in the end, your, your strength and, and your grit are, are like muscles in our body. Either, either, either you use them or they, they deteriorate. So you have to continue to challenge yourself, stimulate yourself, create difficulties for yourself so that you can you can train these muscles like determination motivation and grit so I believe truly that of course studying is very important and that's a fact but there are many people who are are great in school and in college and in studies but then then what differentiates from really being able to to, to achieve things that's characters and grit and, and, and the, the ability every day to to just grit your teeth and, and give everything you can. So in, in, when in doubt, without even thinking about it, pick the harder road. 
Anzitutto, buongiorno, buonasera. First of all, Samantha. good day, good evening, Samantha. I'm Ginevra, I'm the fourth year of Liceo Scientifico in Volterra, and I would like to be a theoretical physicist. My question is, what are the uh, emergency plans for launch and the return trip? Vera, ti devo chiedere di ripetere la domanda. I, I, Vera, I have to ask you to, to repeat the question. Do you, do you mean the uh, launch and return of a space vehicle? Do I understand that correctly? Yes. Okay, okay. Perfect. So, so first, for, I, I think you... So I wanted to know what the emergency plans are. Okay. Okay. So they confirmed that that was a question. So I, I think that you definitely uh, caught the fact that, that launch and, and return in a space mission are two critical moments. Fundamentally, because there are great energies at play, you know, during launch, you, you can see it visibly. You, there's a great energy that's released. We have to release a uh, space vehicle uh, at 400 kilometers per hour. So, so you, you, you're sending this uh, space vehicle at great speed at 28,000 uh, kilometers per minute. So, so when you re-enter, you have to dissipate this energy um, so that you can impact the ground with uh, an acceptable speed. So during launch, the bad things that can happen are, are malfunctions in the uh, rocket. So there are emergency evacuation systems, especially when you're still on the launch pad. So for example, if, if a fire should develop or in the first phases of flight, there is a, an evacuation system that basically separates the vehicle from the, the rocket and, and pushes it away with a great acceleration. So let's say, not very comfortable, Probably the astronauts would be hurt, but they would survive this emergency. And then throughout all the other phases un until the orbital injection, depending on what phase you're in and so uh, at what altitude and speed you are, there are different procedures for emergencies to be able to come back to Earth safely. So in our case, we launched from Kazakhstan. So all the, uh, all the path throughout Asia was full of vehicles that were are ready to help us uh, uh, rescue us in case we were not able to get to orbit and needed to re-enter the Earth before coming uh, arriving in space. For re-entry, fundamentally, the emergencies that are predicted or, or better, the contingencies that, that we have go from a, an automatic re-entry from, from different kinds of manual re-entry, so from an, an, uh, an automatic one to one completely manual. Uh, to even arrive to a ballistic reentry, to where essentially you're you're re-entering like a, a rock, the Soyuz is is able to survive as the astronauts are. Uh, even then, not not very comfortable because it has some G's, some accelerations that are very elevated. And that's it from Rome. And that's it from Rome. Thank you, Samantha. An applause for Samantha. Thank you. I thank you all. This was a great pleasure for me speaking with you. I, I know there are hundreds of uh, uh, young men and women in the room, so I, I truly hope that uh, this can be uh, a reason of inspiration for coming to space today. And uh, I hope that you continue uh, well in your studies, so continue to challenge yourselves so that you can grow as people, both prepared and 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 faithful in your own abilities so that you're going to be able to realize your dreams and aspirations. Good luck to all and break a leg. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, European Space Agency, Italian Education Minister Stefania Giannini and guests. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.